we're going to look at Song of Solomon chapter 1. Now, what amazes me is that when we try to disprove the black Hebrew movement, they automatically assume that I'm a racist. So I don't know why they would do that. So they automatically think I'm a racist, and if you look online and type my name, it's amazing how many videos criticizing me are from black Hebrew movement, actually. I think someone even made a roast video of me, too. It's very childish <laughs> and immature. But the thing is this, is that obviously we're not racist. I mean, we have black members in our church. Brother Rick, I mean, he studied a tons of stuff about conspiracies, and his father was born from Ethiopia, actually. And he actually criticized the black Hebrew movement. So uh, we actually rented uh, our church from a black church for many years. So the thing is this, is that we're not racist against black people. In fact, I'm going to give you a video right here which is going to be very interesting. you got to understand this. Jesus' wife, the Christian church, mm -hmm. there's only one race that is pictured as. Mm -hmm. The black person. Didn't you know that? The church of Jesus Christ, you got to understand, its picture, its symbol was actually a black woman. Now we're going to first of all look at Song of Solomon chapter 1. Song of Solomon, all Christian scholars know this, even liberals know this too. Song of Solomon is a book that has a lot of romantic passages. So then liberal scholars and Christian scholars, they've all wondered, you know, why would the Christian church put this as part of their Bible? And then Christian scholars have argued this. We put the Song of Solomon right there because it's a beautiful picture of the relationship of Jesus Christ and the church, his wife. So obviously Jesus Christ would be Solomon. And then the church would be the woman at the book of Song of Solomon, chapter 1. Now... Song of Solomon, uh, I'm not going to do this, I showed it at a different video, but I showed you a Song of Solomon, it proved to you here that Solomon, who pictured Jesus Christ, not only that Jesus came from Solomon, is actually a Jew. And you can think of the Jew in the nation of Israel today. I showed you the features of that, it's not a black Jesus. But the problem is this, see, this is one something that I want to show the black Hebrew movement right here. The black Hebrew movement, what they've done is that because they're so focused on becoming a Jew and becoming Jesus, something that they are not, wanting something that they are not, they're overlooking a blessing where they're something that they could be, that they should be glad about, about their race, but they Amen. totally ignored it because they wanted to be something that God didn't intend them to be. Amen. And see, that's a good, valuable lesson for all Christians. God has given you something that other people don't have. But the problem with us is that we get so covetous and we get so fleshy-minded that we want that something else that God did not want us to have. Amen. And we overlook the blessing that we currently have right now that God has given to you. Mm -hmm. And I want the black Hebrew movement to understand that. I know that black Christians and black Bible believers know already what I'm talking about. So they don't need to know this stuff. But I'm going to show you something right here. Go to Song of Solomon chapter 1. Now, look at the first verses. They should have looked at the first verses right here rather than trying to prove that Jesus was a black person all the way at the end of Revelation. Look at the first chapter, Song of Solomon, chapter 1, and we will read verse 5. I am what? Black. Black. But comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem. Notice that this black person is differentiated distinguished from what? The women in Jerusalem. Thus proving that the Jews weren't a black people. This is different right here. Now let's keep reading. As the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of who? Solomon. So this woman is distinguished from Solomon. So this is definitely talking about the woman. She's a black woman, folks. Look not upon me because I am what? Black. black. Because the sun hath looked upon me, my mother's children were angry with me. They made me the keeper of the vineyards, but mine own vineyard have I not kept. So you'll notice right here that Solomon's wife, the woman here, which is pictured as a church by Christian theologians, so I'm not saying Bible believers. Liberals even know this too, that Christian pastors, Christian theologians and scholars, they all use Song of Solomon as a picture of the relationship of Christ and the church. 
Well, if they're going to say that, then you know what they're going to have to believe? That the woman, is the, the woman, which is pictured as a church, is black. Here's another interesting thing. We're going to look at Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. There, look, if you're going to insist on becoming a Jew, you're going to overlook something very important right here that's even more important than a Jew, actually. Amen. And I'm going to show you something here why it's going to be even more important than a Jew. We're going to look at Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. Very idea, accusing me of being racist. I'm trying to show you a blessing here that you got even more than the Jews in Israel today. Amen. I'm going to show you something right here. Look at Acts chapter 8. You know, the first time, the first convert, the very first convert of salvation by grace alone without works, trusting in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the very first Christian, so to speak. You know who it was? It wasn't the disciples, you got to understand. It wasn't the Jews at Jerusalem. If you doubt me, look at Acts 2.38. That is not the gospel. Repent and be baptized for the remission of sin. That was for the nation of Israel. God did not intend that for non-Jews. He had a purpose for the church, non-Jews. He had a gospel for them. The gospel of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ alone, mm -hmm. believing alone, without any work. You want the very first recorded? You won't find any other verse except Acts 8. That was the very first time. You can't find anything before that. Look at Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. The very first person once the church was founded. Look at verse 27. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of who? Ethiopia. Ethiopia a union of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure, and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, read what? Isaiah the prophet. What was he reading about Isaiah the prophet? Look at verse 32. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shear, so opened he not his mouth, in his humiliation, his, his, <coughs> excuse me, his judgment was taken away. For who shall, and who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. So the Ethiopian eunuch, he's reading this passage from Isaiah 53. Do you know what Isaiah 53 is about? Death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The eunuch asked Philip, verse 34, Eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or some other man? And Philip's going to tell him that's Jesus, verse 35. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him who? Jesus. Jesus. Look at verse 36 through 38, one of the greatest passages in your Bible. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here's water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, Here's the salvation. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You'll notice verse 35, he heard the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's the gospel in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And you're not going to get any other earlier record than this one, where a clear-cut presentation of the gospel without works whatsoever, and by faith, believing on Jesus Christ for salvation. This is the clearest, earliest record of a Christian saved. You're not going to get any earlier and clearer than that one together. And then notice verse 38. At, so 37, he got saved first. 38, then he got baptized. You know what your modern Bibles do with verse 37? They cut that off completely. And when they sliced it off, you know what they did? They robbed the blessing for what God intended for black people to see. The first Christian convert who had the clearest gospel was a black person, Amen. an Ethiopian eunuch. But they cross that out, and they just assume in verse 36 and 37, he just get baptized for salvation. I wonder how many black Hebrew movement will trust in water baptism for salvation. Then. That's not the gospel. What did Paul say at 1 Corinthians chapter 1? I came not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. What is the gospel? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 through 5. 
This is the gospel. Moreover, I preach the gospel unto you, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Did that Ethiopian eunuch get that? Yes, and he got the gospel. Amen. So you got the first Christian convert right there in verses 32 through 38. The first, see how God's, God, you got to understand, he works with pictures. You got to look at the Bibles. If you look at the Bible, the Bible says that when he gives prophecies and he gives stuff, he gives it in similitudes. He gives it in pictures and symbols. Why did Jesus spoke in parables, you got to understand, to picture something else? So, God gave you a beautiful picture right here. First Christian, so to speak, is a black person. Why? Because of this beautiful picture that God knew as Saul of Solomon. The wife of Jesus Christ, which is a church, will be a black person. Why would God want a black person right here? Because it perfectly pictures a servant, a sinner, who would humble himself before Jesus Christ. Why did he choose a eunuch, you got to understand? A servant. Why would he choose, in Song of Solomon chapter 1, a person who's despised by the Jews in Jerusalem? Who did the Jews despise? Gentiles, called them dogs. And then who did Jesus turn to? He turned to what? Gentiles, the dogs. And he turned to those people. And you got to understand this. This is a beautiful picture right here where a person realizes where he is despised and broken by the world, a servant of servants, and realizes, Lord, I am nothing without Jesus Christ. And it's that kind of humility where he would humble, he or she would humble himself before Jesus Christ and receive Jesus Christ for his or her salvation. That's a beautiful picture of what a black person represents for Jesus Christ. And you just sully and ruin that picture by saying, no, I don't want to become this picture. I want to be like those Jews in Jerusalem instead. Mm -hmm. You know what God did with the Jews in Jerusalem today? Go to Romans 11. Go to Romans chapter 11. You know what God did? They're despised, you got to understand. They're put aside. They're cast away. Why in the world do you want to become like the Jews in Jerusalem today? They're cast away. So you got to understand this. In the Old Testament, the people that God used were the Jews in Jerusalem. However, they rejected their Messiah. And during this transitional period right here, then God turned to who? The church, who are non-Jews. And when he turned to the church, you know what he did? He temporarily cast aside the nation of Israel. Now, this is not to say that the Jews in Israel are done. God's going to restore them again in the tribulation and then the millennium, which lasts for a thousand years. So then the Jews will be the focus again. But guess what? The Jews today, they're not the focus today. It's who? The church. Why in the world, in the year 2017, you want to be somebody who's not in this time period today and who's temporarily cast aside? You know what the time period is today? For the church. It's the church. Why wouldn't the black people want to become what? The Christian church. Why would they want to be something else who's cast aside and done by God until later on in the future? That's why I'm telling you, this is better than being a Jew. This is better than being a Jew. Amen. Look at Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11. Verse 25. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is what? Happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Notice right here that Israel is blindness in part. And not only that, that um, they are blinded and not coming in until... When? Until a future time period. The fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And then verse 26, and then verse 27, sometime in the future. So you got to understand this. The nation of Israel is divorced, is cast aside. Did you read your Old Testament? What did God say about the nation of Israel? I divorced them. Read the book of Hosea. I divorced the nation of Israel. He's done with them. 
but he put on a new wife, and that is who? The church. And then his new wife is a church. So if I so that's why I don't know if you know this, but the easiest group of people you will come across when you're soul winning, and the evidence is shown throughout history today for the past two thousand years, the easiest people to win to Christ are actually black people. Mm -hmm. They're the easiest to win to Jesus Christ. In fact, even the liberals' heroes, the liberals deify their black heroes trying to pr promote their liberalism through minorities, but they, even those liberal black heroes can't ignore God out of the equation. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you, uh, if you look at a lot of black Hollywood actors, they talk about God, God worshiping God, and then they mention Jesus. Not only that, Martin Luther King Jr., what? He had to turn to the church. He had to become a preacher. Why? Because that's where most of the power, most of the people were at. And they were part of the Christian church that time period. Now, they, there were wrong doctrines all over, but it doesn't change the fact that if you're going to have a group of people that's most soft-hearted to Jesus, yeah. it's actually black people. Amen. They're the easiest to win to Amen. Jesus Christ out of all races. By the way, do you know who's the toughest race to win to Jesus Christ? Yeah. If you go to the nation of Israel today, there are missionaries who have... You know who's the most of the members in the churches? In Bible-believing missionaries' churches? It's not Jews, it's Muslims. Now, you know how hard it is to win a Muslim to Jesus Christ? I won a few homosexuals to Jesus Christ and didn't win a Muslim yet to Jesus Christ. You know how tough that is? And, you, and, and the black Hebrew movement wants to become this, really? Cast aside in darkness, divorced by God. And not only that, going to hell if they don't receive Jesus Christ for their salvation. So, you see, don't cast aside a blessing that God has intended for you. Mm -hmm. The very idea that I'm racist, I'm actually putting you on a pedestal right here. Amen. I'm putting you on a pedestal. All Christians realize that that's their picture and that's what they ought to be. A servant of servants, broken down, realize they are a sinner in need of a Savior. Cast aside by God's chosen people, the Jews, despised, hated, strangers, and considered as dogs, as Jesus called them at, Ke uh, at the book of Matthew. But that's what Jesus came. He says, unless you realize you're sinners in need of repentance. I came not to call the righteous, but who? Sinners to repentance. He wants you to be that downtrodden. Mm -hmm. And that's why you can come at the foot of the cross and receive Jesus Christ for your salvation. Amen.